Now let's dig deeper into the midterms now. For more on that, we'll bring back D.C. correspondent Joe Khalil. Good morning, Joe. Hey, good morning, Kelly. So, you know, let's start with Georgia because you just had a robust conversation about the race. Uh, what's also significant is that we're getting our brand new first round of polling ever since the uh, Herschel Walker controversy. And so we are actually are seeing the impact that it may uh, be having on voters. And what it shows us is that it did tip the, the race at this point a little bit uh, in Raphael Warnock's direction. Not significantly, but certainly the scandal has had somewhat of an impact. So if you dip into the new uh, Emerson College polling, this is what it tells us. Uh, right now, there was an eight-point deficit. Herschel Walker was leading Warnock when it came to men, to male voters in Georgia. Well, that lead has now been cut from eight to six. So Warnock uh, made up some ground there. Warnock had a lead of about five points in women voters in Georgia. Well, that lead has gone from five to nine points ahead. So clearly that has, you know, tipped the scale a bit in Warnock direction. And we look at overall approval rating. It is now 51 to 47 uh, for Raphael Warnock for the incumbent senator. And that's also reflected in some other polling as well. So again, clearly it has had some bit of an impact, uh, this controversy that you've already laid out with, with Julia Manchester here a bit. Uh, but still, it is notable that the vast majority of Senate Republicans are standing by Walker and indeed doubling down on their support for him on the campaign trail. Herschel Walker will be a champion for the people of Georgia. Just like, just like he was a champion in football, he'll be a champion in the United States Senate. A man who has overcome great adversity. A man who wants to bring the people of Georgia together. Let's talk about Pennsylvania now. This is always going to be a close race, but uh, there was almost what we would call a comfortable lead that John Fetterman had over Mehmet Oz. That lead is now diminishing, and the race is getting closer and closer. And since he had a stroke back in the spring, John Fetterman noticeably has had some struggles with his speeches uh, on the campaign trail, on the stump. Uh, their only debate between these two that's coming up later on, uh, John Fetterman has asked for closed captioning so he can read uh, the moderator's questions to him rather than audibly hearing them and responding. He's had trouble when he's had to actually listen to questions out loud. So he has asked for that closed captioning. And there's been a little bit of controversy around this because just in the last 24 hours or so, he did an interview with another network. And uh, the reporter said that in the small talk before she actually sat down, did the interview, before he had this closed captioning, uh, she said she wasn't sure he was fully understanding what she was saying. That has come with some blowback. And in fact, the Fetterman campaign has come out, uh, as well as John Fetterman himself. And he has said he's fully fit to serve in the United States Senate. He says proof of that is the fact that he's continued to be on the campaign trail. He continues to do speeches, to do rallies, and to give interviews nearly every day heading into this November midterm. So a lot going on. You know, it's just going to pack in as we get more and more, uh, as we get closer now to actual election day in November, Kelly. All right. Certainly a lot to watch. Joe Khalil, thank you. Thank you for watching. Go to NewsNationNow.com to find NewsNation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of NewsNation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.